What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Accidental Overlander. I am Ryan, the rookie overlander who started this channel to help out other beginner campers just like me. And today we are going to go over five beginner camping tips that would have helped me out if I knew them a year ago. And the last one is probably one that you do not hear very often. So let's get right into it. My first camping tip is know your menu that includes what you're cooking and how you are cooking it because you could just think that you're gonna go out and cook on a fire but if it had been raining the week before all the firewood you're gonna collect is not gonna be good for cooking and then a lot of people you're either cooking on a stove or on a scottle so you you'll have your propane or your butane whatever your cooking source is gonna be and no matter what you're planning on cooking out there, just make sure you always bring backup snacks or extra food because you never know what could happen. You could, your fire could get messed up. It could rain on you all weekend and mess up your fire cooking. Or you could have the raw chicken you put in a plastic bag or a Tupperware container that could get a hole in it or break and now you have raw chicken juice all over everything that you were planning on cooking in your fridge or your cooler and now you basically can't cook any of that stuff anyway or maybe you get to your campsite later than expected or you've had a long day it's happened to me tons of times where i've had great plans of cooking this awesome breakfast and i wake up and i just eat an apple and a breakfast bar because i don't feel like cooking a whole meal. So always just bring your backup snacks or easy things to cook. If you're like me, you watch a lot of camping YouTube videos, so it's very easy to get caught up in the awesome in the awesome meals that these guys are cooking that could go into food magazine. So you don't always have to compare yourself to them. It's fun to try to cook like that every once in a while, but it's also nice to keep it simple and eat something easy like hot dogs or anything like that. So first thing, know your menu, know how you're gonna cook it, but also bring back a food in case something goes wrong or you just don't feel like doing it. Tip number two, check the weather constantly. Before the trip, I'll always do my 10 day forecast, but with that, I, I know 10 days out is probably, it's probably not gonna be like that. So once I start getting, you know, three days, two days before the trip, that's when I really start checking the weather religiously, just trying to see what's gonna happen. A lot of times they can still be wrong, but it's always best just to check the weather. And make sure when you're checking it, check your hourly, how the weather is gonna look hourly, because things change fast. Another thing that you want to check and that can be easy to forget is the nighttime weather. Obviously, you want the days you're there to be nice. It's nice to have a sunny camping day rather than a rainy camping day. But when you're in your tent or possibly even in your car, that's when you're really going to want to know what the weather is. You're going to see what the temperatures are doing at night because I've been out on the mountain where the day's beautiful, 70, 75 degrees, you're almost sweating. But then the nighttime temperatures were dropping to 40, 50 degrees, which you might wanna have some thermals or something like that for even in your sleeping bag or right when you get up out of bed because you're not gonna hit those 70 degree temperatures till it gets to about 10, 11 o'clock. So know your weather, especially the nighttime weather, trying to sleep when it's cold and you're unprepared for it, it's gonna be next to impossible. You're gonna be hopping in your car and turning that thing on and hoping the heat can save you. This next one isn't so much a tip as much as a fact that you might just need to come to terms with, especially your first few times out camping. But just come to terms with, it's not gonna be the best night's sleep you ever had. I don't care who you are. You might be able to get away with it if you have the means and the space for an air mattress and you know, a nice sleeping bag, and then it happens to be 65 degrees and perfect at night, then yeah, things might work out for you. They rarely end up being that way. It's usually the times I've been out, it's been too hot, too cold, even a hard wind can mess up your sleep. 
when I was first going out with the with the family, we thought it was going to be good enough just to put a comforter on the ground. That, that and the sleeping bag would be enough padding to keep us nice and comfortable. We were extremely wrong about that. The first couple of nights camping were probably the worst night's sleep I have ever had, but it didn't stop me from wanting to keep going camping. That's kind of how I knew I enjoyed it, but that's a story for another day. But just come to grips that the sleep you're gonna have isn't gonna be good almost no matter what. No matter how prepared you are with your sleeping pads or any of that, it's still not gonna be a great night's sleep. That being said, sleeping pads are amazing. I have, I've got four of them now because I have a family and so we can all go out and get a sleeping pad. Those help a lot. I learned from my winter trips this year that not all sleeping bags are created equal. And that was a tough one to learn on my first ever winter outing where I thought I was gonna freeze to death. But yeah, make sure you have the right sleeping bag for the occasion. A sleeping pad or a cot will help out tremendously. And even in the winter weather, I got a, a just a little mat that's supposed to keep your body heat a little bit. That keeps the cold ground just away from your sleeping pad. And that's helped out a lot. So all these little things you'll kind of learn as you go. But even with the perfect situations, it's still not going to be a great night's sleep. So don't, I wouldn't, if you really want to go camping, don't wake up and just go, man, that was the worst night's sleep I ever had. I'm, I'm never doing this again. I gave it a couple chances. Be better prepared so you're not waking up with the rock in your back. Just those little things will help out a little bit. You're gonna wake up a few times regardless, but that should not kill your camping trip. Know your sleeping situation and then work from that to what will benefit you the most or make you the most comfortable. My tip number four is going to deal with lighting. Be prepared with lights. Me not being a camper myself until last year, living in like the city suburb, even when it's dark, it's not that dark. And I didn't realize the extent of that until I actually went out and went camping for the first time, dispersed camping for the first time and realized that it, it is really dark out there. Everyone usually kind of remembers to bring a flashlight. That's an easy thing to remember. You need a flashlight. But if you're going to go camping multiple times or you plan on it, a flashlight probably isn't going to cut it. I would highly suggest you get a headlamp. Headlamps are my best friend out there, especially when I'm out there by myself because I don't have to worry about it going in anybody else's face. But yeah, when I'm out there by myself I, at night, I probably have the headlamp on my head at all times. I also have bought two other lights, a cube light, and then another lamp, which can come in handy at the house if you ever lose power too. So they kind of have dual purposes. When you're out there, when you're trying to cook, or if you're trying to cook or do anything besides just sit by the fire and maybe have a drink, you're going to want lighting for it. But where a headlamp will help the whole time, it's sometimes nicer to still have some, some background lighting, especially if you are trying to film YouTube videos. With the GoPro, they don't work that great in the dark, so you need all the lighting you can get. But just make sure you know that when you're out there, it is going to be pitch black. You are not gonna be able to see anything outside of where your light's gonna be, unless you have a full moon that might be able to help you out. But other than that, it's gonna be very dark. I'm still getting used to it when I go out, and I've been on you know a dozen trips or so, and I still go out there and get a little weirded out. So lighting, I would say a headlamp. I like the USB charging ones, but yeah, get your lighting in order. My fifth and final tip I have for you guys, especially us beginners, if you're backpacking and this might not work for you so well, but if we're car camping, overlanding, tent camping, do this, and that is overpack. Don't worry about having too much stuff in your car. If, if you think you might need it and it fits, put it in there. There are obviously things that you're gonna need more than others. You're gonna want your lights, you're gonna want a first aid kit, you're gonna want your food and sleeping stuff. But if you have like little things, your bug spray, obviously, but the little things that you're kind of on the fence about, just bring them. 
And then as you do multiple trips, if you don't use them, then you leave them home the next time or you just stop bringing them. But when you're first getting started, you do not want to be out in the middle of nowhere with no cell phone service and nobody else with you, barely seeing anyone else, and then needing something. Because you're either going to have to cut your trip short or you could be in an even worse situation. So overpack. Don't worry about don't worry about having too much stuff. It's going to be okay. Every time I go out, I feel like I get a little bit better at camping and then I also go through my things. Some things I'm like, ah, I've never ever used this. But I don't want to be out there and then needing it because then we'll just be screwed. So that is going to be it for these five beginner camping tips. I hoped at least one of them helped you out. If they did, please give this video a thumbs up. If you want to watch me go out and make a fool of myself and make mistakes camping, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions about camping, I am always glad to answer them or try to answer them or I will find the answer from somebody that actually knows what they're doing because I have no shame and I don't care about asking people questions. So yeah, that's what I'm here for is to help other beginner campers get up and get out and go on adventures with a little more confidence because if I can do it, anybody can do it. So all right, we will see you next time.